Hi everyone, Jeff Simon here with Venom Batteries and Chargers. Wanted to go over a few things today on LiPo batteries with you. Just some basic introduction, what you need to know about these kind of batteries and, and how to properly maintain and take care of them so they live a long and happy life for you. So let's dive right in. Why would you want to go with a LiPo over one of the other battery styles that are maybe a little bit less expensive like nickel metal hydride or nickel cadmium? Well, one of the most important things with a LiPo battery to remember is that LiPo batteries maintain a very constant state of discharge. What that means when you put it in a model is the last five minutes of your runtime is just as much fun as the first five minutes, meaning that it really maintains that same speed and power throughout the entire run with the battery. With the older technology and the older batteries, you'd notice that the last five minutes weren't a lot of fun, that it was actually probably uh, over a 50% reduction in power and speed. So that's why you'd want to use one of these batteries. They have a very linear power output, which just allows you to have a lot of fun with your model um, for the entire time that you're using it. So let's talk a little bit about what differentiates a LiPo battery from other ones, just physically looking at it. And I'm going to start with one of our more popular batteries. So this is a two cell 5000 milliamp 25C battery. Now LiPo batteries themselves come in cell counts. A single cell battery is going to have a nominal voltage of 3.7 volts. That's one cell. A two cell battery is going to have a nominal voltage of 7.4. That's a multiple of 3.7. You just multiply that. So a three cell is going to be 11.1, .1, a four cell is going to be a 14.8, and so on. That's going to dictate the amount of raw power that's available in your battery. Now, always buy your batteries with your model in mind. In other words, take a look at the manual, take a look at the recommendations that the manufacturer specifies for that model, and always remain within those specifications. That'll ensure that you're not giving it too much voltage where you could accidentally burn out a component in the model. The most prominent thing that you'll notice about a LiPo battery as compared to other traditional batteries is it has an additional lead on it. This is what we call a balance lead. Now, these two, the positive and negative wires that come out of it, this is the main power that you're going to connect to your speed control, but this guy is only really going to be used in charging and uh, or monitoring. Now this allows you to look at the individual voltages of the cells within the battery so that you can get an idea of the overall health of the pack. And we're going to go over that in just a minute. Now one thing that you may not know about LiPo technology is that these batteries have a very specific voltage range that they like to live in. Now, what I'm going to be talking about now is individual cell voltages, but again, understand that if you're talking about a two cell battery, there's two cells that need to maintain this voltage and the overall is gonna get you the total pack voltage. So, um, in talking with an about an individual cell, those cells need to live between 3.2 volts on the low end and 4.2 volts on the high end, leaving you basically um, one volt to work with there uh, for the discharge in your, in your model. Now what happens if that battery gets drawn below the safe voltage line? If the battery goes below 3.2 volts per cell in any one of the cells, it could cause damage to the battery. Now that may manifest itself in just a battery that won't charge itself up all the way, doesn't really come back like it's supposed to, maybe it has a reduced um, Char discharge time. If the voltage dropped below the safe voltage in this battery, normally you got eight minutes of runtime. Maybe now you'll only get six. Uh, in a more severe damage to the cell, you actually see the cell puff um, or have some physical defects. Those are definitely situations where you're going to want to reach out to our customer service department and we'll take a look at that battery. We'll analyze it and see what the best course of action for it is. A word about low voltage cutoff and the model that you're putting this battery into. Most modern RC vehicles have what they call a LiPo cutoff, and generally that LiPo cutoff is set at 3.2 volts per cell. What that means is when the speed control detects that the average voltage of the battery is at 3.2 volts per cell or below, it's going to cease operation. Now you're going to find that most commonly in ground vehicles, RC cars, trucks, buggies, things like that. When you get into vehicles like boats, airplanes, helicopters, 
These are vehicles that have what are called a soft cutoff, meaning that they don't want to leave you stranded. Clearly, you can't shut the voltage off in a plane up in the air, it's going to crash. So a lot of times they'll do something where it'll reduce the amount of power going out to it. You only get about 60% of effective throttle, or um, you'll get a pulsing. Uh, a lot of times in the ultra micro airplanes, you'll get a voo, 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 and that's going to indicate that it's time to take that airplane down. Uh, boats will stop operating the moment you relax the throttle. The voltage is going to lift back up and it's going to allow you to bring the boat in, but probably only at about 30% of what the overall throttle in the, in the boat is. In any of these cases, please understand that when you get down to the end of the usable voltage of the battery, if you continue to use the pack, you are threatening damage to that battery. You do not want to draw these batteries below the safe voltage. It is not good for their chemistry. Jeff, that's all fine and good, but I don't know how to check the voltage of my battery. Well, we're going to cover that right now. I highly recommend that you get yourself a small LiPo check device like this. It allows you to quickly and easily plug in the balance wire and get the overall voltage of the pack as well as the individual voltages of every cell within the battery. This is a very nice device. I recommend having a couple of them. Keep one in your toolbox, keep one on your workbench. It's very nice to be able to tell exactly what the health of the battery is without having to get out a multimeter. Now, if you don't have one of these, you probably do have one of these. Uh, this is your standard multimeter, allows you to check voltages. Uh, if you don't have one, they're very inexpensive. You can get them for about anywhere from five to ten dollars at places like Harbor Freight or online on Amazon. So you want to make sure that your multimeter is set on the correct setting. Now what you're going to want to do is make sure that it is on DC voltage. Now very commonly what you'll find is uh, this symbol here. It's got a solid line, uh, right below it is a dashed line, and then a V. Uh, that's the setting that we're going to be on today. Now uh, just to kind of show you other multimeters, you know, Here's one where it's, you know, here's your VDC, your voltage DC. You're going to want to be on 20, and that's going to be able to get you uh, the, the information that we need. Taking our battery, looking at the balance connector, you take the red wire and place your red probe on where the red wire is, and then you get your black probe, and you place that on the first black wire and press down and you will see on the screen we got a voltage of 4.106. Now to check for the next cell, just move the probes from these here down to the next set over. So your red probe is going to go to the next space over and the black probe is going to move over to the next one. We press down, 4.12. And then to get our third cell, we just again move down our red wire is now on the third connection in and the black uh, tester is in the very last position. And we push in and show that that cell is 4.11 volts per cell. If you want to check the overall voltage of the battery, you can simply check at the power leads, go negative and positive. So we've got 12.35 for the overall voltage in the battery. Another way to check that is you could simply press here and here and see we've got 12.35 on the first and last space in the balance connector. So this tells me that this battery is healthy. Uh, the cell voltages are within the optimal range for the battery and this could be charged or discharged depending on what you wanted to do with the pack. Now identifying the cell voltages is very important because it, again, is going to tell you about the overall health of the battery. If you find when you're checking your cell voltages that one of the cells is below the safe voltage, again, being below 3.2 volts per cell, that's a condition where you're going to want to reach out to our customer service department so that we can help you with that and determine exactly what's going on with that battery. Just to reemphasize, always make sure that you're checking through your manual of your model uh, to determine what voltages of batteries you can use and whether or not the voltage cutoff is set properly for the battery that you're using. Some of the more common questions that we get have to do with charging a LiPo battery and what is a safe procedure to do so. So I'm going to cover some basic rules on charging LiPo batteries to make sure that you're doing it safe and effectively. First, you want to make sure that you're using a charger that will allow for LiPo chemistry. Now I'm going to take a moment to talk about charging. 
Now, if you're using the stock charger that came with your model, chances are what I'm about to cover may not apply to your charger specifically. But I still encourage you to follow along with us because I'll be making some pointers that will apply to even the most basic of chargers. Today for our example of a charger, we're going to use the Venom Pro Quad charger just recently released. But these instructions will apply to any four button charger that allows for LiPo charging. Let's dive in. All right, so now we're gonna talk a little bit about charging a LiPo battery. Again, we're using our Venom Pro Quad charger. Uh, on this charger, this button down here at the bottom switches us between the four different channels on the front of the charger. We're gonna be using just channel one today. So ignore this button on the bottom of the charger as we will not be using it. Now with most four button chargers, you're able to select a wide variety of chemistries. Now this is the single most important thing that we need to make sure that we're getting right on our LiPo charge, is we wanna make sure that it says LiPo charge up here in the corner. As you can see, I'm gonna cycle through. There's LiPo, there's NiMi, there's NiCad, there's Nickel Metal. There's many different options within the menu uh, system itself. You wanna to go to Program Select LiPo Battery. There should be a start and enter button. We're gonna press that button. Now we're within our LiPo charge area. Now, I'm not gonna cover all of the functionality of LiPo charging. I'm just gonna cover the basics here. But you'll see that we can now cycle through. We've got LiPo charge, LiPo discharge, LiPo storage, LiPo fast charge, LiPo balance, and then we're back to LiPo charge. As a general rule, LiPo charge is your standard charging solution. It's probably the most commonly used. Now we talked about the balance wire earlier. Now here's where you would actually get to use this. So for a standard charge, you actually don't need to use the balance wire, but we recommend you still plug it in because the charger is going to give you some additional information as you're charging. So you wanna connect your balance plug and get that connected into the balance board. And then you want to find the connector that suits your battery and adapt it and connect it to your battery. So we have the balance wire plugged in and we have the power lead plugged in. We're ready to charge. So the one thing that you want to identify here is your milliamp hour rating of your battery and your voltage rating. So this is a 5,000 milliamp battery. To charge at a 1C charge rate, you divide your milliamp number by 1,000. So in this case, it's five. Just to give you some other examples, for an 8,000 milliamp battery, it would be 8.0. For a 6300, it would be 6.3. And let's say you had a small battery, like let's say it was an 800 milliamp battery, uh, a 1C charge rate would be 0.8. So that's gonna give you the safe range to charge your battery. Next is voltage. Now again, the voltage is a direct relation to the cell count in the battery. This is a two cell battery, it's a 7.4 volt. Again, three cell is 11.1, four cell 14.8, one cell is 3.7. The voltage number is simply a factor of the cell count. So we've got LiPo charge up on the screen. By pressing the start button one time, it's gonna make the amperage flash. Now, we're gonna set the amperage based on the C rating that we came up off the milliamp rating. So, if this is a 5,000 milliamp battery, we divide that number by 1,000, that gets us five. So we can increase this number from 3.0A, A for amp, up to five. Now, let's say your charger didn't go up to five amp and it only went up to two amp or three amp that is perfectly acceptable. You can always charge at a lower C rate. Some batteries will allow you to charge higher than a 1C charge rate. Check with the manufacturer to see what their ratings are for the battery that you're charging. Now, we've got this set at five amp. I press the start button a second time. Now the voltage on the, on the other side of the screen starts flashing. Now, as I mentioned, if you hit decrease, it's gonna take it down to two cells, 7.4. That's what we want. Just to show you, we hit decrease again, it's gonna go down to 1S, 3.7. We hit it a few times, four cells, 14.8, five cells, 18.5, six cell, 22.2. But again, we wanna be set to two cell. So, 5.0 amp, 7.4 volt for a two cell battery, 
We're at a 5,000 milliamp 7.4 volt battery. We are good to charge. So when you're at this point, you press and hold the start button. It's going to beep. Now what the charger does is it checks what you have told the charger that you're checking versus what it sees when it checks the voltage of the battery. So R stands for what it reads. So that's what it is reading from here. S is what's set, what the user has set. So you've set it at two cell, it reads two cell, it wants you to confirm by hitting start. As we hit start, it's going to initiate the charge, the fans in the back of the charger come on, and the charge is initiated. Now, as I mentioned in a standard LiPo charge, you do not need to plug in this little extra wire here again, our balance wire. But this is why I told you that you should. If you press the increase button one time on our charger, it's going to bring up a different screen. Now what this shows you is it shows you the individual cell voltages of the battery as it's being charged. So you can monitor the health of this battery as it's charging to make sure that everything's going properly. Now. Another very important thing that we need to cover right now is sticking around with your battery while it charges. 99% of the time, charging is uneventful and you have no problems. It's going to charge up to 100% and you're going to be good to go. Occasionally, batteries can become damaged during use. If you crash, the battery may look normal, but there may be something internally incorrect with the battery, which is why we always want to make sure that you stick around the battery and you watch the charge to make sure that everything is going the way it should. If you notice that the battery is getting abnormally warm, if the voltages are not lining up properly, if things don't look right, please discontinue the charge. You do so by pressing the stop button, disconnect the battery, contact our customer service department so we can find out exactly what's going on with that battery. Now let's discuss LiPo balancing for a moment. Other than LiPo Charge, your most frequently used program within a four button charger is most likely going to be LiPo Balance. Balancing a LiPo will generally take a little bit longer than a standard LiPo Charge. And if you constantly are balance charging, you can be reducing the life in the pack a little bit as a LiPo Charge, a standard LiPo Charge, is a little bit less stressful when it comes down to it. What balancing charge will do is it will monitor the individual cells within the battery and it will ensure that each one of those cells gets up to its prime voltage, which is 4.2 volts per cell. Again, this process does take a little bit longer and unlike LiPo charging where plugging in the balance lead is optional, when you're doing a LiPo balance, plugging this lead in is absolutely mandatory. Another feature that we want to cover is LiPo storage. So let's say that you're not going to use your batteries for the winter. You have an RC boat, boat season is over, you're going to put your batteries away and they're going to be away for several months. There's a way you can prep your batteries to make sure that they're set for storage and that they won't incur any damage while sitting for extended periods of time. The way you do that is you initiate a storage charge. A storage charge is roughly 50% of the usable voltage in the battery is where the, the pack is charged to. So in this instance, if you have a four button style charger like the one that we're showing you here, you have the storage mode there. And the neat thing about the storage mode is it will charge or discharge the battery depending on the state of the pack. It's gonna take it to about 3.7, 3.8 volts per cell and it's gonna discontinue the charge. When that's done, the battery is safe to put on the shelf and store it for an extended period of time. We don't like you to store your batteries fully charged or fully discharged. Fully discharged, obviously, as they sit, they can lose voltage, they can go below low voltage and make the battery unusable. If you store your batteries fully charged, it's just not very good for the batteries. It's going to reduce the lifespan of the pack. It's going to make it uh, susceptible to puffing over uh, that extended uh, time of non-use. Storage charges are very important uh, for those people who uh, um, our RC users seasonally. So make sure you're putting these batteries in storage. They'll, they'll certainly last a lot longer and give you a lot more joy over the life of the pack. So in this video, we've covered the basics of LiPos, how to identify the LiPo and the cell count within it. We determined what the safe voltages are for a LiPo cell, how to safely charge a LiPo, how to safely store a LiPo, and some other common things that we see here at Venom concerning LiPo batteries. We hope you found this video informative and educational, and if you have any questions, please reach out to our customer service department as we'll be happy to help you.
Thanks for watching.